Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to introduce the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Curtis Dickinson. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. On March 14, 2016, the Government of Bermuda and the former Minister of Finance, Bob Richards, provided irrevocable guarantee agreements to lenders providing certain credit facilities on behalf of Morgan's Point Limited for use in the construction of a new hotel and condominium project at Morgan's Point. The guarantees provided to the government would be required to fund the project at a maximum cost of $165 million if the borrowers were unable to meet their obligations to the lenders. Despite the financial viability of this project having been in question for many years, the OBA government guaranteed much of its lending even as the project continued to be beset with difficulties. Despite extensive efforts by myself and the Premier to support the developers, they have defaulted on the terms of the loan agreements with their lenders, in particular failing to make any interest payments on the Tranche C loans and their payment and additionally several Bermudian companies and workers have gone unpaid. We understand that a number of businesses have claims against the developers and the project now known as Caroline Bay has been jeopardized. While this government did not enter into the deal that placed the people of Bermuda on the hook for the debt consequent upon the failure of this development, we are responsible for resolving the negative and unfortunate outcomes from the deal negotiated by the former government. Our first priority is to protect the public purse and Bermuda's global reputation. Next, we must ensure that once our professional advisors establish ex exactly what happened, that our vulnerable local companies and workers are protected. In this regard, this government will acquire the valid claims of Bermudian companies, many of whom have suffered financial difficulty, having in good faith provided goods and services on this project. Finally, we must bring this project to conclusion. To understand how we got to this place, we must go back to the history surrounding this project. In March 2016, the principals of Morgan's Point announced that they had secured the financing for the first phase of the development through the support of large institutional investors including Arch Reinsurance, Axis Capital, and Validus Reinsurance Limited. By November of 2016, it had been announced that construction had commenced on the Caroline Bay Marina with the view to having it open and operational in time for the America's Cup the following year. The marina was opened in April 2017. As I said in my prior comments in the House of Assembly, what the people of Bermuda did not know was that even before the marina was opened, the Caroline Bay project was experiencing difficulty. This had to have been known by the cabinet of the day and the developers who persisted in providing public updates on the project that were inaccurate. In fact, in January 2018, one of the, one of the developers told the Ritz-Carlton newsroom, and I quote, Caroline Bay's construction project is well on its way, and not only is the first phase of the Ritz-Carlton Reserve residences at the Cove project projected to be delivered on time, but the development of the resort community has brought great prosperity to our island, end quote. Contrary to the statement, one month later, in February 2018, after the Progressive Labor Party had been in office for only seven months, the developers asked to meet with the Premier and Minister of Finance to advise that there were significant financing issues and that in all likelihood, work would slow down and eventually cease without an injection of further capital. Since that time, the government has worked with the developers and has attempted to support all reasonable efforts to secure financing. The Premier has made himself available to meet with several prospective financiers and on every occasion has supported the project and the effort to secure much needed financing to complete at least phase one. To date, the developers have been unsuccessful in their attempts to secure funding to meet their financial obligations to the tranche B and tranche C lenders. As a result, both the tranche B and C lenders have demanded repayment in full of their outstanding loans. In seeking to robustly defend the public purse, 
the government has ex elected to exercise its option by reason of the defaults to acquire the interest of both the tranche B and tranche C loans. The government has negotiated a credit facility with local banks for up to $200 million, the proceeds of which will be used in the first instance to pay the tranche B and tranche C lenders. These extraordinary circumstances and the liabilities triggered by these defaults has resulted in the government having no choice but to raise the debt ceiling in order to borrow monies to fund the payments to the tranche B and C lenders as set out in the guarantees. In preparation for this action, the Ministry of Finance has been in discussions with global rating agencies. The decision to increase the debt ceiling runs counter to the plan that I outlined in this government's budget statement in February of 2019 that we had no plans to incur any additional long-term borrowing in this fiscal year. While this turn of events was unplanned, our commitment to being prudent stewards of the public purse remain unchanged. Later this morning, I will table an amendment to the Government Loans Act of 1978 to increase the debt ceiling by $250 million to $2.75 billion. This amendment only provides for the authority of the government to borrow up to the newly established limit, and it is important to note that incurrence of debt or long-term borrowing will only take place when absolutely necessary. This matter is one of those cases. Thank you. Is it, uh, is it on? So uh, when we talk about tranche B and, and C, would you be able to spell that out a bit, uh, explain what that means to those of us who um, didn't take economics in school? <laughs> who, who are tranche B and C, and, and what are the amounts? So tranche B is uh, $80 million, and they are institutional investors, uh, principally U.S. institutions. And the tranche C lenders are were originally three uh, insurance companies, Axis, Arch, and Validus. Validus, at some point over the course of the last year or two, sold their interest, their loans, to Arch and Axis. So the remaining tranche C lenders are Axis Capital and Arch. And will they have to be paid off at once, or do we, do we come up with an installment plan for paying it? They have demanded repayment of the amounts due to them as a result of the defaults, and it is our plan to pay them out completely. How quickly could we see that, um, as in immediately or before the end of the year? Is there a time frame for when we must We're looking to finalize the uh, movement of funds the early part of next week. And that will be raised from, from local banks, you said? Yes. Does that mean that the Bermuda government ends up owning Caroline Bay or having a part stake in it? We will own the debt on Caroline Bay. That doesn't mean that we end up, <laughs> forgive me, owning the development or anything like that. It's simply owning the debt? We, uh, at this moment, we are acquiring the debt on the, on the, on the property, on the development. Has there been any explanation? Can you perhaps go into why it was was it essential to embark on this guarantee agreement in, I believe you said, March of 2016? Jonathan, that's not a question that I can answer. I wasn't the Minister of Finance in March of 2016. I think the government of the day made a decision to support the development of Morgan's Point, and they, uh, that support was in the form of a guarantee. Uh, things haven't quite worked out the way people would have liked for them to have worked out. Uh, the government is on the hook as a result of the guarantee for $165 million to the lenders. And uh, the lenders have presented us with a request for repayment. And as a result of the legal obligations that we have by virtue of the guarantees, we're responsible for paying them back the money that they're owed. Last question, sir. Does that mean that we hear the, the rating agencies, Standard & Poor and such, um, could we potentially be down, downgraded by them be because of this? So part of the credit process that the rating agencies uh, 
undertake on the islands, they are aware of the amounts that we guarantee. I mean, we do have other guarantees in place. Uh, as part of their analysis, they sometimes factor into uh, the debt of the country a, some sort of scenario playing around uh, certain guarantees coming due. Um, we have been in contact with the rating agencies. Our conversations have been constructive. Um, this does potentially raise some risk for a potential downgrade, but I think that we have positioned uh, uh, our, our discussions with them in a constructive way, and we're hopeful that, uh, that there is no negative impact ratings-wise from, from this action that we're having to take. Yes, lastly, so are, are we looking at a scenario of paying out $165 million in one go imminently? Yes. Next week? As soon as next week. Thank you for that, sir. Uh, yeah, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Gentleman, for coming. Well,